On January 23rd, 2020, the doomsday clock lurched forwards by 20 seconds. Now, only 100 seconds separate us from 12 o'clock, midnight, and the hour of reckoning. And what happens when the clock strikes 12? Well, let's just say it's not good. Back in 1947, as the world reeled from global conflict and the first acts of nuclear aggression in our history, the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists set their now infamous doomsday clock for the first time. It was seven minutes to midnight, or seven symbolic minutes from the destruction of all mankind. Since then, the clock has moved backwards and forwards in response to global events. Recently though, it's been generally moving forwards, closer to midnight, closer to the end. With climate change now dominating the news cycle, a global pandemic leading governments to locking down their populations and bringing economies to their knees, and nuclear warfare now discussed as a genuine possibility rather than dystopian sci-fi fantasy, it's easy to see why the situation is so dire. The day of doom is coming. Still, at least we're all in it together. Or are we? For the super rich, it may be a case of every man or woman for themselves. Some billionaires, it seems, are preparing for the apocalypse. And you and I are not included. You don't have to be a billionaire to go to space, but it helps. A trip to the International Space Station with Elon Musk's SpaceX project will cost you $55 million, although other space tourism services may be able to take you out of Earth's atmosphere for substantially less than this. An escape route off this planet, however, is not something any of us, not even Musk or Bezos, can realistically hope for. Where would we go? What would we do? Colonizing Mars is still well beyond our capabilities, despite what some might say. Orbiting a dead planet in a space station would require vast amounts of resources and almost impossible logistics. Drifting hopelessly in space feels like the only viable escape option. And don't expect too many people to volunteer for that. No, even the billionaire doomsday preppers must limit their expectations. There's no escape, and we're just going to have to make the best of it here. On planet Earth. So, what do we do if we can't take to the skies and fly off to some new world? We burrow. We don't sell fear, we sell preparedness, the rising S company's slogan tells us, and it seems there are plenty of people in search of that preparedness, however much it might cost. Rising S sells bunkers, high-tech, high-security structures built to withstand basically anything, and business is booming. Sales roared sevenfold between 2015 and 2016, coinciding with the arrival of President Trump in the White House, with fears of polarization stoking anxiety in some portions of society. Rising S sells products like The Venetian, a charmingly named property that sounds like a Mediterranean villa, but is in fact an underground bolt hole reinforced with plate steel and designed to defend against a whole host of disasters whether man-made or otherwise. From Kansas to the Czech Republic, and from the Pacific Northwest to New Zealand, those who can afford it are building their defenses and securing themselves a chance at survival. With fully equipped gyms and even synthesized sunlight, these sprawling structures are designed to protect the physical, emotional, and psychological well-being of residents. A healthier, happier tomorrow is possible, even if society does come to a horrific end. At least, it's possible for some of us. Of course, there's more to survive in the apocalypse than just having an ultra-secure pad to crash in. You need the provisions and the attributes required to ride out the storm. For some, such as Reddit executives Yishan Wong and Steve Huffman, this means eliminating weaknesses to optimize chances of survival if everything goes south. Both Huffman and Wong reportedly underwent LASIK eye surgery in preparation for the end. This surgery, it was hoped, would give them the keen eyesight required to stay alert and, crucially, alive 
if the worst were to happen. The best form of defense is a good offense, so they say, and this has been another area in which the super-rich prepping community has been excelling in recent years. Step forward Marvin Lau, ex-Yahoo CEO, who has invested time and effort into archery tuition and survivalist training in preparation for a return to more primal times. Whether hunting for food or defending against roving bands in a Cormac McCarthy-esque nightmare, a tomorrow in which archery skills are key requirements feels pretty bleak. And what about those supplies? Well, you're going to need things that are fundamental to human life, which means filtered air, potable water, and nutritious food to keep you going. You're also going to need sunlight, even if that sunlight is synthetic. Fuel is going to be important too, to not only keep the lights on, but also to help you make your getaway. Solar panels and other renewable energy sources are common features of the average doomsday prepper's setup, as are the fossil fuels required to run generators, cars, and even helicopters when required. Oh, and there are guns too. Lots of guns. And ammo for those guns. Preparation really does mean preparation in every sense of the word. It's frightening to look at the news sometimes, like the genuine existential dread type of frightening. Extreme weather events are growing more common and more deadly. The pandemic that recently swept across the world highlighted how easily disease coupled with poor governance can still cripple humanity on a global scale. Meanwhile, armies are still being shunted around like pieces on a chessboard, threatening broad conflicts that could drag us all into a third world war. And then there are other threats, solar flares that could knock out our electrical grids and computing systems, data disasters that could wipe the records of financial institutions and government departments. There are things to be scared of out there, and it makes sense that, if we had the money, we would want to do something about it. We want to protect ourselves, our family members, and our loved ones. But perhaps there is something else taking place here. Perhaps the billionaire doomsday preppers are railing against something more profound, something a little more difficult to escape than a tsunami, an infectious disease, or even a nuclear bomb. The true enemy might be mortality itself. Jeff Bezos of Amazon and general space tourism fame, Google's Sergey Brin and PayPal's Peter Thiel have all reportedly funded research into calling time on mortality altogether. Essentially, extending human life on an indefinite basis. Death, as we've always known it, would be no more. Whether by undergoing blood transfusions using donations from younger donors, cryogenic freezing to preserve key organs for future resurrections, or even downloading the very data of consciousness and identity to a computer system so that life can continue even when the body cannot. Billionaires are searching for methods to prevent the inevitability of our demise, whatever form that demise may take. This is nothing new. China's great unifier, Xin Shi Huang, sought the elixir of immortality in the 3rd century BC, and probably ended up giving himself fatal mercury poisoning as a result. 16th century Hungarian countess, Elizabeth Bathory, allegedly bathed in the blood of virginal victims in an effort to preserve her youth. It goes without saying that neither was successful. Perhaps prepping is something more symbolic. Perhaps the intention was never to survive the apocalypse, or to begin anew, but rather to feel useful, to have a purpose, or to nurture a sense that something can be done. Gilded tombs do worms enfold, Shakespeare wrote in The Merchant of Venice. Maybe billionaire doomsday prepping is simply an effort to prove Shakespeare wrong, however futile that effort might be in the end. But what do you think of all this prepping? Perhaps you think it's their money and they can spend it how they want. Or maybe you think it's a little selfish of those with the money and the means just to leave us all behind to fend for ourselves. Or it could be that the question is actually more complex than this. It costs vast amounts of money to prepare for the end of the world. Wouldn't that money be better spent trying instead to prevent Armageddon? Trying to save humankind? After all, it's not too late. It may only be 100 seconds to midnight, but there's still time. Let us know what you think in the comment section below.